Hi guys, and in today's video I've got a cracking topic for you. I'm surrounded here by three vintage inspired modern saxes. We have a signature custom raw access here, an Eastman 52nd Street, and a P. Moriat 66 RUL unlacquered. Now they're all unlacquered, they all have this vintage sort of inspired uh, look to them and appearance. And the manufacturers have created them like this on purpose because they're trying to sort of reenact that classic old sax look and sound of those saxes of yesteryear, such as the Mark VI and the Con 10M and these kind of instruments, um, but very much with a modern twist to them. So it's no good just making a saxophone that's completely buried in the past just with a vintage sound and that's it. What these saxophones tend to have in common is that they have a big booming sound with plenty of character and texture and all that kind of thing, but they have that vintage look and a vintage feel in the sound. How do you describe, describe what a vintage feel is? Well, it's tricky to put into words, but perhaps that's where this test and this video can kind of um, open the door with that question. So I'm gonna demo through them all, um, try and play something similarish on each of the instruments so that you can just get a sense of what each of them gives in comparison to one another. So I'm gonna start with this very popular signature custom, raw excess. Uh, the excess meaning that the, all of the uh, finish, the polish that exists on the standard raw model has been removed, stripped off, so it reveals the, the bare brass finish. And the idea of that is to give maximum vibration in the sound, so the sound is really free, very big and very open. So let's give it a go. <laughs> So this is a great sax. I mean, so much power and so much depth in the sound. You can really range it from a, a, a quite a beefy kind of subtone and um, controlled core tone to this bright, all powerful sort of singing sound. And it just wants to fly into the altissimo there. I kind of chose a funky piece to play there just to sort of show off that element in the higher range of the sax. And at the same time, you can so easily drop off and then you get this lovely under layer as well. It's so easy to articulate as well and just fly around the sax. Um, I, I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail in terms of the spec of the instrument because you can see the individual uh, video on the sax in order to get those details. But generally speaking, it's got a lovely feel on the ergonomics, very easy to move around and very solid as well under the fingers, so well designed. So that's the SIG Custom on lacquered raw excess. So next up we have the Eastman 52nd Street. <laughs> So I love this sax, um, very similar to this one in that it's got that lovely core sound to it, the warmth and the core sound, um, but it actually goes bright quite soon, a nice bright poppiness there. 
and it's very free blowing as well. My immediate reaction to playing this compared to the Raw XS there is that it's actually even freer blowing, um, which is a, a great thing. I mean, some people don't like a sax to be overly free blowing, um, but for me, this hits the right balance um, in terms of resistance, shall we say. Um, and it's very solid under the fingers as well. Feels great under the table keys here. We've got some adjustable palm keys here if you need to move those into a, a slightly more favorable position. Um, and I love things like this, just this solid button here on the back. Nothing fancy going on, just feels great under the, under the thumb. Um, so overall, great sax and very sort of centered sound, but goes to a nice bright poppiness, which suits that sort of contemporary edge that I was trying to create in my playing there. So let's move on to the P. Moria. <laughs> And another very similar sounding saxophone to these guys here. It's got that same freedom of sound that I'm feeling from the Eastman. I mean, they're all quite free, but I noticed that the Eastman was just a little freer to me than the Sig Custom. And then this one here shares that same free blowing quality. And again, a big sound. It goes bright very nicely. I'm sure assisted by this uh, mouthpiece here when you really push it with that funky kind of playing. But the thing that they all share in common is that big vintage kind of core sound right down the middle. As soon as you lay back on the sound, you really get that kind of lovely warmth to the sound, the, the warm core. And that's what I would describe as a sort of vintage sound. So it's vintage, but at the same time, it's modern because it has that power and the capability to really push through in those um, kind of playing environments. And also ably assisted by a lovely key setup, lovely ergonomics. And for me, they all have great ergonomics. I can play them all quite happily. They're all slightly different and all take a little bit of getting used to, um, but they all feel very snappy and very comfortable. So I'm now in the position of calling a winner out of these three saxes, but I have to say I'm genuinely stuck. I don't have a clear sax in mind to go for as one that's head and shoulders above the others because they're all so good. Initially my feeling was that it was going to be the Eastman. I've always enjoyed that sax. But moving on to the other ones, they play just as well and they have that same sort of luxurious tone to them. So it's really tough to say. I would say if you have the opportunity, come down to our store in London and try all three out if you're liking this kind of vintage inspired uh, tenor saxophone or alto sax for that matter. They exist in alto formats as well. Uh, but if you can't make it down to the store, hopefully this video has given you some insight into the, the different tonalities of them when you listen carefully to the audio. And that might give you an idea as to what to pick if you were going to choose one on our online website. Uh, but otherwise, hopefully this has given you a nice insight and comparison to these three amazing heavyweight tenors. <laughs>